we are facing a rising tide of global challenges and seeing just how fragile our world is when stressed. We're 18 months into a global pandemic, misinformation is seemingly everywhere, and we just experienced the hottest month in recorded history. We know there are consequences to inaction, so what can we do? If we retool our thinking, we can work backwards to adapt before challenges turn into crises. Innovation hinges on our ability to see the world differently, breaking down barriers and looking between the lines in an effort to solve some of the world's toughest challenges. I've seen firsthand what it takes to solve problems at the speed of crises and the importance of technology's role in empowering people and communities to overcome the situations. 10 years ago, I was a postdoc at Harvard, writing and publishing papers, solving problems in theory. Soon after, I found myself embedded in a conflict zone, working with DARPA on an intelligence team using machine learning and AI to predict hotspots of violence and protect people. For me, that was a wake-up call. And being on the ground, it was obvious that there was so much that we could do if we worked with people who were experiencing the problems and if we built technology that was designed for the speed of a crisis and the context of a crisis zone. We've learned how fragile the architecture of our society is when stressed. We can see that technology needs to be built differently. We can see the systems that were designed to be efficient may also be brittle. Societal scale problem solving requires new technologies. Technologies that can flex and scale and adapt to address common problems across crises. We're doing this by creating a tool set of open technologies that can be rapidly combined and redeployed. In the fight against digital crimes, AI is helping to identify patterns in real-world data, providing valuable signals that allow institutions to root out corruption, identity theft, and other threats. The same technology is being reapplied in the global fight against human trafficking, where there are an estimated 25 million people victimized. Through a new partnership with the UN, we're helping curate the first global portal for human trafficking data worldwide. Institutions around the world will use this to enact evidence-based policy. So the integration of an AI-based approach to open technology gives us opportunities to learn from a changing environment, to be relevant, and to be responsive. A societal challenge as part of the pandemic is how to get people back to work and back to school and back to their life in a safe way. We started developing smart health card technology about a year ago. The goal is to give people full control over their data, both digitally and on paper. The idea is that anyone who's had a vaccination or a test result should have easy access to their information, to be able to share it on their phone or with a piece of paper in their pocket. A vaccination card that's both verifiable and shareable it needs to have an open standard if it's going to work across society. The only way to create an open standard across society is to convene a large collection of stakeholders. In fact, smart health cards would not be possible if not for a large coalition of public and private organizations working together on open technology standards, as well as community guidelines. If we can break down traditional barriers and bring together diverse minds, we create solutions that are more adaptable, more inclusive, and that help us make better decisions. In a crisis, existing systems and practices start to break down. Information is especially messy. You have to gather information quickly from lots of places in order to match resources with needs. We're a year into a project where we're working closely with communities and how to build technology differently with them as co-designers. Building this way requires face-to-face -face conversations, human-to-human -human collaboration. We have to spend time with communities we have to involve expertise like social theory, qualitative study, ethnography. We need to have a community-first approach that's built on relationships that are long-term so that we understand the implications of technology long-term. Crisis experience, and all of our experience during the pandemic, inspires a new paradigm for research. It means we have to build technology at the speed and scale of a problem. It means we have to understand the context of people involved is different than a the laboratory. There are consequences to mistakes. We know the crises we face today will be different than those tomorrow. 
So what can we do to be ready and resilient? We have to work together with others. We have to work in an adaptable, fast fashion in order to be relevant, in order to be effective, in order to have lasting impact.